Irene, how do you think he would, if he was freed, how would he spend that first day of freedom? His first day of freedom, um, a friend's already arranged for a nice car to pick him up and take him to a greasy spoon cafe where you get all these breakfasts with all grease and, you know, eggs, fried eggs, chips, everything you can think of for breakfast. He's going to have double of every one of those and really enjoy it. And then he's going to go for a walk with bare feet along grass. He can't wait to walk on grass. It's been over, God knows how long it's been, before he's ever walked on grass. And then he's um, going to go to an art shop and he's going to have a good look at all the paints and the oils and everything and paint brushes because he's never used anything like that before. And he's just so excited about doing that. And then in the evening, he's going to go and have a nice steak. Um, well done. He likes it well done. He's going to have fried onions, fried mushrooms, everything. He's really going to thoroughly enjoy it. And that's what just he... what he wants to do. Just well, wants Arie... every, every day sort of things. But Arie, what if he doesn't get out? If he doesn't get out, um, well, it's, you know, what's the moral to the story? They let murderers out, they let, you know, they rapists, um, paedophiles, terrorists out. And Mick's never murdered anybody. He's been violent in prison because of his treatment. He's been very, very violently treated in prison. Mm. So, you know, at the end of the day, years and years of that sort of treatment, you retaliate. Um, he... Uh, if he doesn't get out, he will be very, very disappointed. He's been closest to freedom than he's ever, ever been before. Six, seven years, he's done nothing at all. Nothing at all. Even though he's still been wound up a lot by different guards, they still do things, but they, he hasn't had the brutality that he has lived with for a good 35 years of it. Um, uh, he, he will be devastated, but what, what we would like is for him to go to a hostel for six months or maybe 12 months, whatever. Um, he'll, he'll sort of have to be there in the evenings and he'll have time out during the day, but probably have to be tagged. But at least he can just mm. taste freedom. He's 70 Similarly, years old. Yeah, it's a sort of halfway house you're talking about here. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. If he has, you know, that would be great for him. He can just taste freedom. I mean, if he doesn't get this and he's downgraded to another category, I mean, that's going to be at least another two or three years in prison before he even gets a chance for parole again. And yet they let somebody like Gary Glitter out. He didn't even have parole. Yeah. And all those things he did to all those different children. Um, I mean, what, where is the moral in this? Mm. Well, he's you back know, inside, he's isn't he? We should say. But listen, you know, it's not ever just about uh, the prisoners themselves. There's always the family members that are affected by incarceration of a loved one. And I know that he uh, says it would mean the world for his mother uh, if he was released today. Um, tell us about that. His mum is 95. I mean, you know, she's, she's lived with this all her life. My son has. My son's 50. And it's not George Bambi, by the way. He is not the proper son. Whether I'm allowed to say that, I don't know. But he is not the proper son. Um, my son, Michael, is the proper son. He has lived with this, as I have as well, since Mick first went into prison. It's a, it's an ongoing thing. And it's time he was out. People do think he's a murderer. They think he's a mass murderer. But he isn't. He's never murdered anybody. Never. And he wasn't that violent at the very, very beginning. It was the 60s. It was the mods and the rockers. He was a mod. I was a mod. And the mods and rockers used to have fights, but not fights like nowadays. You know, they don't use, never used to use knives. There was never any drugs, no guns. What about... It was just... Fun. I mean, what sport. about... What about that poor teacher that he held hostage, though? I mean, he'll be worrying about today, won't he? No. He actually said on the documentary that it was time that he was freed. He's done more than enough punishment. Uh, was he killed? No. Was he... Uh, he's still there talking. Uh, was he harmed physically? Only in his mind, he says. But even so, he had this um, nervous disease because of what Mick 
did in retaliation to his remarks that he had made about his paintings and drawings. And um, yet he can still, that same teacher can still actually be, go walking around, do interviews, television interviews, be broadcast. So if you have nerve, really bad nervous allergies or whatever they are, um, through mixed treatment of him, which he never actually lay a hand on him, um, how could he do all that? Right. Well, we'll but find yes, out later <laughs> today what happens, Larry. Yeah, thank you very much for your testimony. And um, mm. it must be good from knowing that someone like you is there to support him on the outside if it if it works out for him. But Irene Dunro, lovely... What, what Irene? Yeah, sorry, Eamon. Sorry, Eamon, but the thing is that um, I know what's actually gone on from the very beginning because I had all the letters. So I know exactly the truth of what's going on. Okay. He's, in, he's not an animal, he's a man. Okay. He should be given his right. Thanks, Aaron. We, we, Aaron, we're up against the clock. I've got to say goodbye to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank